Hello and welcome. My name is Andrew and this is the Who Dat Discussion, a New Orleans Saints podcast where we talk about all Saints news, opinions, and reactions. And this is going to be another um, off-season edition of the Who Dat Discussion. But again, a lot of news. Um, now it's been like about five days since um, we recorded our last episode and a lot of kind of little, um, you know, news has happened. The Saints have brought a couple players in for a visit, and then they've also finalized that Jared Cook signing, which, I mean, we're going to get into just talking about the contract details and why I think that that was just an amazing signing. I mean, when you look at it, really good job by the Saints. I mean, only get him for two years, $15.5 million, all that guaranteed money is in the first year. So let's just say it doesn't work out with Cook. He could come back here too. It's basically just like a one year and then an opt-out after for the Saints. That's what you want to hear. It's a really good deal, but I'll get into that later. Also, we did have Robert Quinn um, visit on Monday. I think, look, if he's a player, we're going to obviously get into that. I think he could be a really big player for the Saints, as we said before. And then also the Saints have, have been working out some rookies. Hakeem Butler is obviously the big one, the wide receiver out of Iowa State. You know, He's a player that you know he did amazing at the combine. Now people are starting to look at his college highlights. He's a very, very good player, and I think the Saints could definitely um, you know look at him um, it's, it's going to happen. They're going to have to trade up because it'd probably be a day one guy, maybe a late, or maybe if he falls, you get him, but he's a really good player. And I would love to see, um, the saints pick him up. And then also we are going to look at kind of looking ahead towards the draft. Now we're going to, you know, recap free agency even more and see if there are really any more flaws for the saints when looking at it. We're also going to look at, you know, Sean Payton's whole, um, he talked to the media this week and he was talking about a lot of things. He was talking about Jared Cook. And then obviously the big news this week, and that's what we're going to start off with, is that the NFL has decided to now, PIs are going to be now um, replayable here. And um, challenges will be made for them. So that would obviously, if this was intact last year, the uh, um, NOLA no calls that people are calling it would have never happened. Um, The Saints would have got first and goal at the two-yard line if that was in place. But the NFL now, at least for the future, um, they do um, have this rule into play so that never happens again. The bad thing is that the Saints are the scapegoat again, and which is just see, look, it's happened a million times um, for the Saints. You know, you had Bounty Gate, which kind of scapegoat because Roger Goodell never went hard on people, and now he finally had to go hard on someone. Happened to be the Saints. Then the 2009, there was a rule. They did win the game, but it happened with the rule where now um, you can't just kick a field goal. You have to score a touchdown. That was because of the Saints, um, the Saints game and the Vikings. The, all these roles happen because of the Saints. And that's just, it, it's to me, it's just not, as a fan base, that's not where you want to be. You feel like things are corrected for your team, but they're not corrected when you need them to be corrected, especially with this call. You know, this would have sent the Saints to the Super Bowl. Um, now, look, this team's going to be different. The 2019 Saints will not be the same as the 2018 Saints, which I know is, you know, uh, people are going to be sad about that. But I'm kind of on to the future now. And look, I'm obviously not over that loss. I don't think any Saints fan is. But I'm on to this 2019 team and how it's going to be. I'm really excited for it. And I think this is a good rule put in place. Would I have liked it to be put in place, you know, last year or the year before? Um, yeah, obviously. But, you know, it got past 31-1. to 1. The only team that voted against it was the Bengals. So, look, the league wanted it to happen. And, you know, it just happened a year late, I guess. And, look, sometimes you need these calls. Because, you know, in the future, it may help the Saints send them to a Super Bowl or something like that. You know, that big things that could happen. But to me, it's a good rule. To just, I mean, to have it's replay should be all these plays, all these penalties should be reviewable. And people are saying, oh, the time of game will go up. No, it really wouldn't because coach is still going to have two challenges. That's not going to change. It's not like you're now you're going to give coaches three, four challenges. They're still having those two challenges, but now everything should be reviewable. The integrity of the game should be number one. And that obviously is going to be the most important thing for um, the NFL going forward, it seems. And look, it wasn't before it seemed. Because that, look, that game, that um, since Rams game is a farce, really, in my mind, because, it, it look, what happened wasn't true. Um, that wasn't, that shouldn't have happened. That There was a call that was obviously against the Saints, blatantly missed calls that would have affected the outcome of the game. And um, it was really, that helped, um, I think, change this rule because the integrity of the game was definitely um, lacking in that play. And obviously, the Rams shouldn't have been there. And I think that's the big thing for the NFL they felt like they had a Super Bowl. They, they felt like they had a Super Bowl lot. Um, they had a Super Bowl boycott in a very big city, in a market that loves football in New Orleans. No one watched. Um, that was, I think, going to their decision. The Super Bowl was a farce. People didn't really think it was legitimate. Not as many people watched it. And as a result, you got a bad product on the field, only a 13-3 game. 
So I think the NFL, they wanted to put more procedures in there to get um, teams to um, now, you know, everyone's going to be playing by the, the rules. Everyone's going to have the right plays. You're going to be able to challenge bad plays and bad calls. I think that's just perfect and what the Saints and what the whole NFL needed. Um, and it's, it, look, obviously it makes us think about the play now even more and what could have been if it was a year earlier. But I think we just got to, you know, everything the Saints fans could have done, mission's accomplished. Because, the Saints, look, obviously we weren't going to change the outcome of the game. But we got rules to be changed. And I think that's, you know, you got to give a hand to the Who Dat Nation there because that's all because of you guys that this rule was changed. And really the whole NFL saw it. And, you know, when people say that the, you know, Saints fans are the only one crying, they're not. Um, you know, 31 other teams were too. Like, p- people thought the Saints would have been in the Super Bowl. And as Sean Payton said, you know, we deserve to be in the Super Bowl. I've been to a lot of places since that game, the Bahamas, Turks, and Caicos, he said. And I've had taxi drivers say that you should be in the Super Bowl, and that was a bad call. And that's, like, you know, when you, now you're going to other countries and other islands, and they're even thinking about this this play. They know about the play. Um, you know, you, you just know. It, it was definitely a bad play. It, you know, it, it showed that the integrity of the NFL was maybe lower than a lot of people thought. And um, I think that will be fixed, though, with this rule. It's, to me, it's a very, very good rule. And um, that was good for the NFL. Good good job by the NFL there. And then also, which I want to get into, to me, top one of the, another top news headline is that Jared Cook's a saint. Um, I said, guys, Jared Cook is my number one option that the Saints should get. I think it, he was always the number one option they should get. I think I told you guys even when we were covering Antonio Brown and that the Saints were kind of in on him, kind of not. And um, I said, I'll take Jared Cook over Antonio Brown. And they got Jared Cook. They obviously saw the need, just like I saw the need, just like a lot of other podcasters, analysts saw the need. And they really, I think they got what the fan, fans wanted. I think they got what the team wanted. I think they got what Drew Brees wanted. And Jared Cook wanted to come too. He said five teams were, you know, wanted him and, you know, were aggressive in giving him a deal. And he um, chose the Saints because he felt like he wanted to play with Drew Brees opposite Mike Thomas. Look, he's a great, great player. Um, we obviously already did a film study on him. We'll have more of those film studies coming out. There are a lot of Saints free agents, and we're going to try to just – we're doing I, – I watched all the film, and now we're just going to um, break down these these um, videos. They'll be probably coming out towards the end of the week, Friday, and then on to the weekend. We're hoping to just, you know, get those out and to you guys because I just love doing these film studies. These guys are going to be good guys. I really like the Saints free agent signings, and um, they're going to be um, impact players. I think, that obviously, right now, I think Jared Cook's going to be that DeMario Davis impact type player. I think he's going to go opposite Mike Thomas, and he's going to he's going to put up a very similar season to last year. He knows what he can bring to the Saints, and to me, it was just a really, really good deal to bring Cook in. Two years, only fifteen point five million. I was saying to bring him in for three years, twenty four million, and the Saints come here only get two years, really only a one year plus a team option, and you know fifteen point five million dollars isn't really that much for a premier tight end. You have Rob Gronkowski retiring, so I, you know you could put Jared Cook into that top. Um, tight end range because really who are you going to put over him you obviously have Travis Kelsey who's always going to be you know that top tight end you have Zach Ertz and then after that who do you really have that maybe even Eric Ebron's better but besides that I I think you could slate him in as a top five tight end and you know I think you could obviously argue that but I think when you when you look at it it's a great great signing for the Saints he does so many good things obviously we said in so many episodes but to get him for this number I was like oh let's see the numbers let's see if it's three years four years it was two years, basically one in an opt out, giving him all the guaranteed money in the first year. He's going to get eight mil in the first year. So, I mean, we'll see how the Saints, you know, craft the um, the cap numbers here. But right now, before um, before Cook here, the Saints have fourteen million. So, think about the Saints will still have nine million to spend, and they're probably, I think, they're going to sign or sign for um, Ziggy Anza, or they're going to trade for Robert Quinn. I think they're going to do one or the other. But to me, I really, I really liked what the Saints done this off season, um, and uh, I think that's really, really big there with the Cook signing. Now on to that Robert Quinn and Ziggy Anza. That's a good transition. I think you know, what I'm getting from the situation and just the, all the directions. I feel like it's pointing in, and I feel that um, Anza and Quinn. It's going to take a while, I think, for this trade market to um, you know get hot. And Anza, he's not signing until mid February, uh, mid April, excuse me. So he's going to wait some time because teams want to see his medicals. So really, I, I think the Saints, they're going to have to wait. I think it's going to happen before the draft, but I don't think it's going to happen, um, you know, like very like very soon. I think it's going to happen probably mid-April. I think that's when we're going to see 
um, the move for either Robert Quinn or Ziggy Anza. I think the Saints will come away with one of the two. And I, th- I think that's just, I think it's going to be a solid move either way. Sean Payton said he wants a defensive lineman with Marcus Davenport basically as being like a platoon. He said they are going to get one. That That's like his exact words almost. So, I mean, to me, that, that that's what the Saints are going to get. We've went over Robert Quinn. We've went over Ziggy Anza. But I think both could be really good players. You have Robert Quinn's at more of that systematic pass rusher, really good at the fundamentals. He's going to get you, um, you know, six to nine sacks, six to ten sacks every year without a doubt. Ziggy Anza's more of your, you know, you know, boomer bust type guy where he can go up and have a 15-sack year. Next year, come up and have a four-sack year because of injuries and stuff like that. I think that um, if the Saints – I think what the Saints need, I think they need a Robert Quinn type player. But – Hey, if you're not, you can't deny Ziggy Anza's talent, who's probably, you know, talent wise, he's probably the best on um of any free agent lineman right now. I think he's one of the best. But I think the Saints, you know, especially if the Dolphins are willing to play a lot of the salary, if you can get Robert Quinn for like seven million dollars, you plug him in there, you're gonna have enough cap to um then you know sign your sign your draft picks, and then and that's that. Um it's a good free agency for the Saints, and um they're ready to go in 2019. I think they did everything that they could. So to me, that's what I think. I think it's going to take time for this Robert Quinn and Anza situation. Quinn did visit the Saints on Monday. He got a feel for their locker room, got a feel for their coaching staff, and uh, we'll see what happens there. But also now just a running tally. Basically, every player that has visited the Saints has gotten a deal in place. So that's definitely something to look for. If you see the Saints visit with a free agent, look out for that name going to the Saints. Um, I think that's really big. Um, the only one that has visited, only two players that have visited and haven't signed with anyone yet, it's not like they've signed with another team, they've signed with no one, is Anza and Quinn. Besides that, when you're looking at Easton, Nick Easton, when you're looking at um, Jared Cook now, he signs. Um, obviously, you know, you have um, Brown in the beginning and um, Edwards Jr., Mario Edwards Jr., all those players, they visited with the Saints and they signed with the Saints. Obviously, really, really big stuff there. So I think that was just all really good. Now kind of um, segmenting to the draft um, you know, point of view here. The Saints did work out wide receiver Hakeem Butler, who I think is just a complete stud. He showed it at the um, combine where you know he's a big guy, and I believe he ran like a four six. And for him, that's like an amazing time. I think it was four five seven. I mean, he's a good um, player coming out of Iowa State. He's a playmaker. You know, he gets up and make the, makes those plays, and I think he could be that type player that you know he opposite Mike Thomas. That that would be an insane combo i think everyone knows that coming into it because it was just i mean he's he's a player he's a good player he's gonna come out and i think he's gonna be able to produce right away he's gonna be one of those receivers um i think you know he's he had a huge year with um iowa state with 60 catches 1300 yards nine touchdowns i mean that's a good good year and he had a really good combine i mean look he had a four four 4.48 combine i'm sorry i said 4.58 um, so look, he's running below a five, a four, five, and he has insane measurables. He's six, six, two thirty, and running a four, four, eight. That's you, you can't beat that. Um, he's a player that coming up, he's going to be a player that the saints are going to look at. And then, uh, you know, any team's going to look at him, you know, especially if you can get him in the second round. So I don't think that the saints would be there to draft him, but if he is definitely watch out for that. He's a hell of a player. Everyone's been saying it. Um, from other podcasts like the All Saints Consider podcast, they um have been mentioning him multiple times. They can give him a really in depth um you know look on him. But to me, he's I mean, look if the Saints could come away with um a you know Debo Samuel or a Butler, you would think that that's a steal at sixty two. Um, I don't know if that's going to be possible, but when you're looking at it, the Saints could really just pick best player available at this point. And I think tight, I think all wide receiver is the place where you would go. And if your best player available happens to be Hakeem Butler. I say, let's go right after him. So that's obviously just, you know, that's amazing, you know, for the Saints. Because I do think that, you know, the Saints will look at mock drafts for, um, oh, the Saints will look at wide receiver, excuse me. And the mock drafts have showed that. Sorry there um, for that confusion. But I do think that when you're looking at it, um, you know, Debo Samuel may be a player. Matt Miller of Bleach Report connected the Saints with Samuel. And because, you know, he thinks that he could be a really good player. I mean, he was, I mean, he scored six touchdowns in, three games in 2017. I mean, that's, that's insane. And, um, you know, he can, he can be like one of those, um, you know, players that the Saints could obviously look at because um, he's been falling a little bit in the draft board. So maybe the Saints could scoop him right up. That would obviously, you know, be very good there. Also the Ohio state players from Paris Campbell, I think it's more of that fourth round player. If the Saints um, wanted to get him or, 
Um, you can get Terry McLaurin probably also in that fourth uh, round range. Those guys are going to be your deep players, probably your replacements to Ted Ginn. I think that would be a good move too. Um, I think the Saints do need a player to stretch the flea field, and I think he can do that. But I also think Butler can do that too. Um, you know, when you're looking at these players, I think the Saints will go and get a wide receiver in the draft. Free agency, they said they were looking at Adam Humphreys, but a deal never put in place. And also Andy Isabella, he's obviously a player. He's so fast. And um, someone said that, I said it, he plays in the slot. He actually hasn't played in the slot yet, but I think his skills can translate to the slot very easily. Um, he's really, he was, he's so fast. And you look at his shifty ability. I just feel like that the Saints would use him in the slot. And I think he can learn the slot, you know, for the NFL players. He looks like that stereotypical um, shifty slot player. Maybe at UMass, which is a small um, football school. It's not that big for football. Um, it is D1, but it's smaller D1. And, um, you know, he was playing on the outside, playing worse talent. But I think in the NFL, he could be a really shifty slot guy. And I think he could translate well into that slot position. I just want to clear that up. Because I, I, he's a really good player. If he falls to the Saints 62, I think any wide receiver we'd be happy at. But also, I, I would go get a lineman uh, if you could. Um, if you can get a nice offensive lineman at 62, definitely do that. We've obviously have been going over um, a lot of potential linemen. Michael Dietler is another one who I think just could be really good. He's out of Wisconsin. You know, obviously, Ryan Ramchek's alma mater. You know, we, when you're looking at it, he could be a player started, I believe, like 57 games in college. Like, that's amazing. Um, or 47 games in college. I mean, he's a good player, um, and I think the Saints could definitely use him there. I mean, that's a very, uh, very good, you know, player. I think that when you're looking at the draft, I think the Saints, I think they will trade up um, into the third round because right now they have a second, and then they don't have a pick until the fifth. I think they will trade into the fourth or fifth, or the third or fourth round. Um, maybe they'll trade it for another second. We'll see what happens here. Um, but I would not be surprised if the Saints do make a move and, you know, get a player – you know, just get um player in the third round because um I think that could be um really really big. Um also Ryan Wilson of CBS Sports he said that you know he could see Andy Isabella with the Saints. So I I think that um you know he can definitely fit right in there with the Saints. He's really fast. He can probably from that slot. I think he can from those seam routes really well. He's the type of player that like the Saints could use. Maybe that Lance Moore type player that because Lance Moore was very very fast too. Um but you know that shifty type player I, I think he could definitely um you know be uh, you know, a very, very, you know, good player. When you're looking at tight ends, I think the Saints could look at some tight ends late now because you have Jared Cook for two years, you know, if Jared Cook's playing at a high level. And then, you know, after that, then you can really, in these two years, I think you draft one like the fifth, sixth round and have him develop into that starter eventually. Um, you, you, when you look at it, Saints, um, you know, assistant GM, scouting chief, Jeff Ireland raved about Foster Moreau. That's obviously... Really, really big there. I think Foster Murrow, the Saints were looking at him all day. I think he could be a player the Saints could um, get up. Also, Dawson Knox is a player the Saints will look at out of Ole Miss. I think those two players, if you can get them fourth round or, you know, Foster Murrow maybe a little later, I think that's a perfect move for the Saints there. I think that is just really, really big. So now we're going to move over to our Houdat Nation fan questions. Um, you know, we got a couple questions this week from James Louie on YouTube. He sent me a couple questions in the comment section there. So definitely, guys, if you guys have questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them on the next um, show there. So he said, do you think the Saints will go after another cornerback um, or, or will they take a cornerback in the draft? And to me, I do think that the Saints, I think this is really interesting because you see, you know, no one signed P.J. Williams yet, which I think is great for the Saints as he's falling deeper and deeper into free agency. I can see the Saints pick him up, you know, one-year deal, perfect. That, if, if I was the Saints, I'd probably do that. I think the Saints will probably try to sign, um, you know, that cornerback slash safety in the draft like they have in the past, like Neutral Jamerson, players like that, that you can get late. They do a lot of things. They play special teams. I wouldn't be surprised if the Saints picked up that player. But, you know, they've already re-signed Ken Crawley. They gave him that tender. I don't think anyone's giving um, Ken Crawley more than that tender. And then also, you do have P.J. Williams. They're still out there. No visits for him yet. So... Maybe the Saints can resign him on like a one-year, $2 million deal, very short. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the Saints do that. But I, I don't see the Saints going for, for another team, especially after they got Sheryls, who's that secondary player that also plays on um, special teams. Obviously, really good got a punt return, one of the best in the league, top five. So to me, that's just really good. That That's what I think about the cornerback position because it is really interesting because um, it's very been up and down, especially that second role for the Saints. But they won't be going outside to me what they need. There, they're going to be going in with their guys with Eli Apple and Marshawn Lattimore, and they I think they have their combo. They feel, and then they have Patrick Robinson and PJ Williams. 
ready to go in the slot if needed. I think that's why you re-sign P.J. Williams. Never could have enough depth, and especially if you can get him for a short-term one-year deal. I think that's you know what the Saints need there. So I think that um, is really, really good. Also from James Louie, he asks, um, what are the chances the Saints take a wide out um, in this year's draft? And to me, I, I just feel like their chances are extremely high to take one in this draft. That, that, that's what I'm feeling. I think they probably will actually do it. Can it be the second round pick? Yes. I mean, they've used second round picks on my receivers with Mike Thomas in the past, so I wouldn't be surprised there. Um, Hakeem Butler, if he's there, I think the Saints will get him. I think they're going to get that best available player. They're going to get that. Um, BAP there. And and that's just what I think for the Saints. I think when you're looking at it, you get Jared Cook, you know, you have no more um, tight end void. You don't have a uh, defensive tackle void, as you said, Um, uh, Malcolm Brown, Mario Edwards, you know, all these players. So you don't have a void there. You obviously don't have a void at running back anymore because you got Murray. You don't have a void, obviously, at quarterback. You don't have a void really at wide receiver. I mean, you do, but you you would be fine going out and getting Des Bryant and calling it a day there. Um, so th- th- that's just what I feel, you know, for the Saints there. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I-, I think they're going to pick a, t- a wide receiver either in that second round. They wouldn't be surprised if they went out and got Butler, if they got Andy Isabella, or they got a Debo Samuel. But I also wouldn't be surprised if they go and get a player in the fourth round, like a Terry McLaurin type player who has that speedster, Paris Campbell, um, who is obviously he's getting a lot more buzz. He may go earlier. But I think t- Terry McLaurin, he's like, he's not so high on people's draft boards. If he goes fourth round, that would obviously be an option for the Saints there. And I wouldn't be surprised um, you know, if they do that there. And I think that would be a really, really good deal. So with all that said, I think it's time to wrap up this podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast episode and you enjoyed our podcast as a whole, you can follow us on Twitter at the Who That Dis, on Instagram at Who That Discussion, on Podomatic at the Who That Discussion. And then also you could subscribe to our YouTube channel, Google Play channel, iTunes channel, and Spotify channel on there. We are at the Who That Discussion. Please ask questions in the comments below. Tweet us with questions. Um, you know, Put it in our Instagram comments with questions, all that stuff. We definitely want to answer your questions. We want to connect with you guys. Um, you know, If you want to talk about the Saints, definitely hit us up. With that, that's what we're here for. We love talking Saints here. And also um, on iTunes, give us that 5 out of 5 rating because you know if you guys can do that, we can put you guys out more content. We have film studies coming up. All five Saints free agents right now from Jared Cook to Mario Edwards to Malcolm Butler to Teddy Bridgewater to um, Marcus Sherrills. We will get you guys those film studies. They're coming out. We've watched all the film. Now we're ready to just you know film them, and uh, they will be out to you shortly in a couple of days. Uh, look, it's been so many players, so we're trying to get them out quick. Once you know, we have one come out, then we're going to have the next one come out. And probably in succession, it'll just be a big playlist. And I hope that all Saints fans can go and watch those. So, uh, the all season's going well so far. The Saints, I think, are getting and filling those voids. The only surprise move, really, for the Saints has really been Mark Ingram leaving. Besides that, I've been really happy of what the Saints are doing. I think, look, the whole thing with Mark Ingram, he wasn't even answering Peyton's texts. So that just seemed like very, like, maybe he didn't want to stay, guys. I'm not saying that. I, mean, I, I think he loves New Orleans and... um. You know, I think he just loves his team, but I think he was a little um, upset with the negotiation process, and he wasn't even answering um, um, Shaw, Coach Payton's text, and, you know, he wasn't communicating very well. You know, like, maybe um, Latavius Murray was just the right option for the Saints. But, um, look, I mean, we'll see how that happens in the future. I also wouldn't be surprised if the Saints went out late round and got a running back in the draft, maybe like the Boston Scott-type player, and hopefully we don't lose him, um, you know, to it. You know, when we put him on the practice squad, someone doesn't, you know, take him up and put him on the 53-man roster – like the Eagles did to Boston Scott. But that's just what I feel, guys. So with all that said, I want to say thank you, prove them right, and who dat?